Hey you guys, welcome aboard Crab Central Station. My name is Darcy and today we're gonna take a look at your tanks and do some reviews. Let's get started. Before we get started, we do this in all of our tank review videos. Please remember that we are all on a journey in our hermit crab care and we all started somewhere probably not in a very good place because there's just not information given when you purchase hermit crabs. It's not correct information and so most of us just don't start in a very good place but we've all gotten better and we are encouraging each other and we are um, just continuing on our journey every single day. And so please, you guys, obviously, if they're sending us their tanks to review, they want to learn and they want to get better. So let this be a positive place where we can all come together and learn and encourage each other and support each other. And so all the comments on this video, let's lift these people up and give them lots of great ideas and encourage them so that they can continue on their journey just like the rest of us and give our hermit crabs a great place to thrive. Okay, our first submission comes from Presley. She says, hello, my name is Presley. I wanted to send some pics of my tank if it's not too late. We love to get some feedback, suggestions, and advice. Awesome, Presley. All right, they have three purple pinchers, two are pretty small and one medium size, and I love the names. Popcorn, pesto, and pepperoni. Oh my goodness. So cute. They have a 20 gallon long. The substrate is a mixture of clay sand to eco worth five to one, six inches deep all around. Plan to make one side lower later. Heating is a Zoomed medium sized heat mat, but plans to update to a larger size later. Heat levels have been ranging between 75 to 82 without the heat mat. And now that it's on, it's closer to 78 to 82. Um, lighting is LED, using a small aerator for their water pools, and she would like some ideas for buying stuff for the crabs to climb on. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so I'm assuming maybe that you live in a warmer area if you're not having to use your heat mat all the time, or if a size heat mat like this is working um, that well, then maybe you live somewhere where it's warmer. So that's something to keep in mind, you guys. We always say to cover three quarters to the full length of your tank. Um, and we do, we live in Texas, it's totally hot here, but we do that anyway, just because we'd rather be on the safe side and, and have that heat available if we need it. So then we just put a thermostat on it so that it never gets too hot. Um, so that's just something to think of. I see that you have um, some type of insulation or blanket on here. So it might mean that you don't quite have enough heat, even though right now your temperatures are reading okay. It looks like your humidity is high and that could be an indication that there's not enough heat. So you have to balance out the amount of water and heat. Um, I know when our heat's a little bit warmer, the humidity goes down and so forth. So you can try upgrading, like you said, you were planning on it anyway. I would say go ahead and do it. Um, you're aerating your pools. Also, that might be why your humidity is a little bit higher. So buy a regulator. They're not too expensive. You can get them at Walmart, pet stores. Um, and then you have a little dial that you can actually turn the airflow down so that you don't have too much um, humidity in your tank. Uh, looks like you have great substrate. So you said you might do a lower end later on. It's a 20 gallon tank and you have three crabs in here. I for sure would not do that. Go ahead and keep your six inches in your entire tank like you have it right here in this picture. Um, that is gonna be the best for your hermit crabs. You have two small and one medium. So this size tank is fine for them right now. As they grow and get bigger, you'll wanna upgrade their tank, of course. But like I said, keep that substrate um, the way you have it, I think is your best bet. Just look at some more pictures. I do see um, it looks like one of your crabs digging down underneath the water dish. So keep an eye on that. Um, if you don't have a shelf under there that it doesn't tip over and kind of tip water into your tank. You have natural wood and leaves, great cocoa hides in here for them to feel safe. You have a plant in the back for them to climb and hide behind. You've got both of your water dishes, extra shells, awesome. 
I love your little piece of pizza. I'm sure that's little for pepperoni there. Um, looks like you've got some good food choices. There are no pellets, so well done. I see eggshells, which is great calcium for them. Um, you've got your gauge in your tank. I do see that you're putting your gauge on the sand. So just a recommendation is to keep it, first of all, towards the middle of your tank and about two to three inches off the substrate. So we usually just take a dish, kind of like a feeding dish, and we turn it upside down and sit um, our gauge on top of that. Or in some of our wood pieces, there's like a little crevice that we can set it in. Anyways, it's, it's good to get it off the sub because your substrate has a lot of moisture in it. And so your humidity is gonna be off, which could be why it was so high in that one picture actually, um, sitting on the sub. So I would definitely try to figure that one out. It'll be helpful to get some better readings. Um, natural shells, like I said, very good. LED lights are perfect. Um, so you're doing great with that. I don't know which crab this is, but he is so cute. He's got great color, his purple pincher. Very good. Look, you're doing great. You have so many good things going on in this tank and some suggestions for climbing. Actually, you have a plant on the back, uh, um, what do you call those? Like a grid, plant grid or a box bush climber. We have some in our tanks too. So that's a great way to give them climbing and you have a tree in here for them to climb. You know, 20 gallon long doesn't give you a whole lot of height. So at um, some point, you, you know, when you upgrade their tank, you could have more space for climbing or toppers are a great way to add climbing as well. So those are some options to think about in the future. Um, we use natural woods and you can stack them in different ways to add climbing. Um, you can try even some of the aquarium decor that they can climb on. They make some coral looking decor that would still kind of look natural, but give them something to climb up. Um, a lot of people use craft mesh on the back side of their tank, which is completely safe and easy for the crabs to climb or the light filter. Um, things that we used, we showed you guys in our easy water pools. Um, you can cut that and create shelves or climbing walls and things like that, which is totally safe in your tank as well. You could weave in and out some plants um, if you like it to look more natural. So those are just some simple ideas, but overall, Presley, your tank is looking really good. You're doing a great job and your crabs are super lucky to be with you. All right, our second submission today comes from somebody named Kylie. And she writes that she has had her hermit crabs for about a month. There are three in the tank. The substrate is a mix of eco earth and play sand. It ranges from six inches to nine and a half inches. She has two heat pads on the back of the tank, so it is completely covered. For lighting, she's using a stand up room light and she has sent some pictures of her three crabs and water pools in her tank. And she wants us to know that the names of her crabs are Mr. Crabs, Shelly and Athena. All right, let's take a look. Wow. Okay, this tank is super cool. So she has a topper on the tank. I don't know what size the tank is. It wasn't in the email and it's, you know, really hard to tell you guys from pictures sometimes. So I'm not really sure the size, but it looks really good. Lots of deep substrate. Um, I love that you have a range from the lowest end being six inches all the way up to nine and a half. That is great. I see that you have a cocoa fiber mat in the back, which is great for climbing. Keep an eye on it for mold, especially if it's touching the sand. Sometimes that can happen. It did for us on a couple of our tanks. The crabs love to climb it and it's totally safe. Just keep an eye on it for mold. You have a lizard lounger that's helping them get from the bottom tank up to the topper, but you have the um, mesh one instead of the, um, I think it's called seagrass. And those ones are, are gonna be good because they don't um, mold and they're easy to sterilize and things like that. We do have some seagrass ones. Again, it's safe, you guys. Oh, you have one actually in the other side of your topper. Excellent. So we use them in the topper and we have found that if you put them in toppers, they don't tend to mold. But if you put them in a tank on the substrate or near your pool, we almost always had trouble with them growing mold. So I love that you have this up in the topper. Um, our crabs love it and they're always on it. So I'm, it's good to find a spot for it. Looks like you have climbing vines, natural wood, a cocoa hut in the back for them. 
Um, a great big shell shop over here in this basket. I see some cuddle bone, which is super important for them. Um, I see that you have two pools and a great way in and out of the pool. You've got some rocks there for traction. You're using bubblers like our last viewer as well. I love how you've weaved them through the craft mesh so that they can't be pulled out very easily and they're very secure to the back of your tank. Well done. Um, looks like you've doubled up your pools. Way to go. Awesome. I can't believe you've only had hermit crabs for a month. This is crazy good. Um, all right, let's see what else you have here. Oh my goodness, your hermit crabs are so cute. Look at them. Yeah, you do have kind of a bigger guy. And then the little one at the end. Oh my goodness. Look at their color. Their sweet little eyes. I love it. All right, so I have literally just one suggestion, suggestion for you. Um, I noticed that your gauges, you have two of them. You have one in your bottom main tank and one up in your topper. And they are digital, but they're the kind that you stick to something. So you've got one stuck to the outside of your pool and one stuck to the back glass of your topper. And I would just say, you're not probably gonna get the best accurate readings in those two locations. The one in the bottom is in the sub right next to your pool. So it's gonna read high, higher humidity than what the overall tank humidity really is. Um, and likewise, up in your topper, um, it's so far away from the heat and uh, the main part of your tank that you're gonna get some different readings too. So the best place to put your gauge is in the middle of your tank three inches off the sub um, and digital is best. So see if, if you have a way to move one of those closer to the center of your tank, just to get a good idea of what the overall average is within the middle part. So that would just be a suggestion, um, I think, just to kind of keep a better eye on your humidity and your heat overall. Um, you know, a stand-up lamp in your room is totally fine. It looks like they're getting plenty of light within this tank, I can tell in the picture. So um, we talk a lot about LED lights and things like that, but you absolutely can use just your room light. And we've done that before. We've just left the ceiling light on in our room um, for our hermit crabs. So that's great. And you're turning it off in the evening right before feeding time and bedtime. So you're getting a good cycle of 12 hours a day and night, which is awesome. Overall, this is an amazing tank. You're doing a great job. Again, I cannot believe that you've only been keeping hermit crabs for a month. Um, so you have done a lot of good research and um, Kylie, your crabs have got to be just loving life in their two-story house with you. Our third and final submission for this video comes from Christine's Crab Care, and she writes that she has five purple pinchers and a 65-gallon crab attack. There's also some cute pictures of her crabbies. She has 12 inches of substrate made with one part eco-earth and five parts play sand. Almost two gallon, oh wait, I have two almost gallon pools, one for salt water and one for fresh water. I have egg crate on the back, two baskets of shells, one for smaller shells and one for jumbo shells because she has one extra large crab, two larges and two mediums. She uses an ultratherm UTH on back, no lighting yet, but would like to get some LEDs. And she has a lot of fake plants that the crabbies love. All right, let's take a look at these. Awesome. All right, beautiful tank, very deep sub. And I just wanna talk about this for a quick second. So Christine has an extra large and two jumbos or two larges. So remember your substrate is three times the depth of your largest crab. So if you have jumbo crabs, you are going to want to have deeper substrate. So six inches is the minimum, remember. And so well done, Christine, you have large crabs, so your substrate is even deeper and that is really, really good for them. Also, I see that you have two pools here and it's really cool you have like an overflow tub that they're sitting in for an emergency situation. So to catch overflow or if the crabs were somehow to spill them you have this tub that's going to catch the extra water also it makes it easy for maintenance you can easily take those out without hurting the substrate so great job there 
Um, I love how you have used the light filters in the back for climbing. And we were talking about that earlier, Presley. You can look here and see that light filter on the back that I was talking about. And Christine has actually put in some of the greenery, like I was suggesting, so that it looks more natural. Um, great job on your shell shops. I can see you've got some big crabbies if you've got those big, huge shells. It looks kind of like our tank in a couple of places um, where we have our jumbo shells at as well. There's a cute picture of your crab. He's checking out the water pool, I see. Um, you use craft mesh for them to get in and out, which is perfect. Here's your smaller shell shop with one of your crabs. That, I love how they kind of hang out in there and you just like can't even hardly see them. Um, they camouflage in with the empty shells. And then this guy, you can actually see him climbing up on that light filter. I can see that you used zip ties, so that's great. I love this, Christine. So we use zip ties in our tanks as well. They're perfect for attaching things um, to keep them secure so that the crabs don't pull them down. They're safe for them. Just make sure you cut off the end so it's not sharp. And it's easy to replace and change things as needed. So that is very good. Um, and this page here, this picture here, I can see that your top of your tank is well sealed. Very good, nice glass tops in there I see. You even have latches, so crabs can escape you guys, so make sure that your lids are secure. We have heavy glass lids, but if yours can easily be lifted, your crabs will try to get out, especially if you're offering them climbing, like Christine is here, um, with that light filter going all the way to the top. So she has latched down her lids, which is a great idea, Christine, so that your crabs don't escape, because they love to just kind of check out the world. Um, so make sure that you guys are always keeping an eye on keeping that safe. And it looks like you have a lot of hiding places here with your plants, like you were saying, that they also like to climb and they can hide behind. So overall, it's looking amazing. Yeah, LED lights, a great addition when you get ready to do that. But again, your room light works fine for your 12 hours day and night. Um, and so, I don't see a gauge in your picture and I totally could be missing it, Christine. Um, so if I am, I apologize. If you don't have a gauge, that's one suggestion that I would give for you is to go ahead and get a gauge, put it in the center of your tank off of your sub so you can see what your humidity and your heat is at all times. And other than that, I think you just have an amazing crab attack, you guys. Um, the three entries that we have for today have just really um, surprised me. Like I'm so excited and I hope that our channel has been helping you guys get your crab attacks um, up to, to standards like this because it's just a breath of fresh air to look at your tanks and review them. Um, your hermit crabs have got to be super happy and thriving with this amazing care that you guys are offering. Thank you for sharing them because we can learn from you guys and everybody watching the channel can take a look at your pictures and learn from you guys um, and what you're doing so that they can improve their tanks um, along their journey as well. So thank you for sharing them. We really appreciate that. Guys, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do that now. Follow us on our social media so that you can hear about all the fun stuff happening at Crab Central Station. And until the next video, you guys, happy crabbing. We'll see you later. Bye.